this is a marker for more severe disease, more symptomatic disease. And there are data from the Mayo Clinic. This is a case control study, which should always be suspect because it really depends on how the controls were selected. But assuming that the work was done well, it really seems to suggest that the more medications that you pile on that are immune suppressing, the higher the risk for infection. What about lymphomas? Looking again at the treat registry, um, these data would suggest that if there is an increased risk of lymphoma, it's relatively small, um, and the odds ratio really uh, overlaps one. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be any powerful risk in the treat registry. But in a meta-analysis that uh, my, my friend and colleague Corey Siegel did, um, he looked at uh, 26 studies with various anti-TNF agents, um, to more than 8,000 patients exposed for 18,000 patient years, and he calculated incident, incidence rate ratios for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So he's doing this cautiously, not lumping all lymphomas together, and just looking at Crohn's disease. And in the literature, we found 10 cases of non-Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma in this population. That translates to 5.5 per 10,000 patient years for anti-TNF-treated patients. Not very high in absolute terms, but compared to SEER data, this is an incidence rate ratio of 2.88 uh, with uh, significant confidence intervals. And uh, Dahlia's in the room. Uh, this is uh, related to the Candil meta-analysis. That's her fiance. Um, the IRR compared to immune modulator alone is 1.5. This may not be a fair comparison because um, current data would suggest that 6-MP itself and azathioprine may be a fairly strong risk factor for lymphoma. This is the Sesame study from uh, the JETED group in France, and this is a very large cohort study where they accumulated more than 20,000 patients with IBD. Um, unfortunately, a mixture of uh, these three things, uh, Crohn's, UC, and indeterminate colitis. And here were the exposures they found in this population there was an SIR standardized incidence rate of 1.8, statistically significant. And I can tell you from work that they presented at uh, European meetings that the major risk factor appears to be exposure to 6-MP and azathioprine. But still note that the absolute risk is quite small. What's missed in all of these analyses is the possibility that there's con confounding by <coughs> indication. That is to say, sicker patients are going to be put on more intensive immune suppressing therapies, and it may be that the disease itself, the, the more, uh, more inflammation you have, the higher the risk you have at baseline for lymphoma. Because if you look at referral populations, you may see as high as a 4.7-fold increased risk of lymphoma compared to the general population. And if you look at uh, more natural population, population-based studies, you see a much more minimal risk. So the effect of the disease itself is difficult to evaluate in these cohort studies and has not been measured in these studies. And it comes to this, you know, when you're assessing causality, when you want to infer that the drug is the cause of lymphoma, you better make sure that it isn't actually the disease severity or the other drug that's routinely used, the 6-MP or the azathioprine, that's really responsible for uh, the negative effect. So do you really need to combine treatment with an immune modulator and anti-TNF? Well, uh, post hoc analyses from the maintenance studies in all of the agents suggest the answer is no. Now remember, these patients, if they came into the study on an immune modulator, by definition they had already failed the immune modulator. They had active disease despite being on it. But nevertheless, if you look at the outcomes in the patients who came in on an immune modulator or who were not on an immune modulator, really uh, they look quite similar regardless of uh, whether you were on or off. Same thing has been observed for infliximab, and this is a look by Gary Lichtenstein at all the UC studies, all the Crohn studies, and really whether you're on or off an immune modulator, the response and remission rates look exactly the same. That's far cry from doing a randomized controlled trial uh, to, to discern this effect, but at least it's something. Where it does seem to be important to include an immune modulator is primarily when you know that the patient is going to get episodic dosing, at least of infliximab. We know that that is a setup for developing antibodies to infliximab, and that in turn is a setup for loss of response to that 
particular drug. And so uh, for a patient who you know is not going to be compliant or may get dosed, not get dosed again for six months for whatever reason, it's probably very important to include an immune modulator, whereas a patient who's going to rigorously adhere to maintenance therapy every eight weeks or whatever the regimen is with the other anti-TNF, um, the difference in outcomes is relatively small. And then we have uh, studies that actually do look very directly at uh, the outcomes in patients who are randomized to be on or off an immune modulator at the same time that they're starting their anti-TNF. This is Brian Fagan's study, COMMIT, um, where simply he took patients who had never been on, uh, on infliximab before or on an immune modulator. He assigned them to, uh, all of them got a steroid taper. All of them got infliximab induction and maintenance therapy over a year. But one arm got methotrexate and the other arm got placebo injections. And here's what he found. No difference. So this is a prospective study. But the other thing to note here is this very high treatment success rate um, at week 14 and at week 50, 76 percent, 78 percent, at one year, close to a year, 56, 57 percent. And when you talk to Brian about why these response rates are so high, um, he says he thinks it's the triple combination of steroids and methotrexate and or just steroids and the anti-TNF. So you have an overwhelmingly positive effect. And then we have, uh, at the end of this past year, we had the report of this study, Sonic, long-awaited, where patients were randomized to either get a um, combination of, in, of uh, infliximab and azathioprine or just monotherapy with infliximab or monotherapy with azathioprine and followed out for a year. We heard the primary endpoint data, week 26 data, presented at um, ACG by Bill Sanborn. And so this is prospective. These are patients who have not been on azathioprine or infliximab before. But who are these patients? Uh, first of all, there were 500 randomized overall. And these were patients who had, were not quite naive, but were not terribly experienced either. Um, they had a median disease duration of about two years. They had mild to moderate active disease. And they also had a fair number of patients with fistulas, a fair number of patients, one in five, who had previous bowel resections. Um, about a quarter to a third had been hospitalized in the past year. So, you know, a fairly aggressive uh, population, uh, not quite naive, but naive to these agents. And here was the surprising outcome. Uh, the patients who got combination therapy did better than the patients who got infliximab alone, who did better than the patients who got azathioprine alone suggesting that combination therapy is beneficial in these patients in achieving clinical remission, at least out at six months. And if you look at mucosal healing, um, there's a very high correlation here. Again, the best results are seen in combination therapy over infliximab therapy over azathioprine. So this suggests something of an additive effect. The question is, is the added risk also worthwhile? And that is really not answered by the short-term study. So how do we put it all together about therapeutic strategies? It does seem that combination therapy is more effective for induction in early treatment, uh, early or treatment-naive disease. After you fail an immune modulator, though, and you're going to entertain going on to an anti-TNF, it's really quite uncertain if there's any benefit to continuing that azathioprine or 6-MP once you're adding the anti-TNF. But the relative efficacy and safety of this combined maintenance strategy, as opposed to monotherapy with just 6-MP or monotherapy with just an anti-TNF, is really not clear to me in early disease. And this is a question of risk and benefit. It's a question of patient preferences about the different outcomes, good and bad. And that really has not been answered by a six-month or a one-year study. 